Francisco de Zuberan will primarily work with and for the Spanish monastic orders. They tend to be very powerful in Spain. They have a lot of work to be done. They have plenty of money for commissions. And his works are generally quiet and contemplative, giving visual background to the devotions that you might see amongst the monks of these various monastic orders. So we see these very simple, very calm, very devotional images, images that you could imagine sitting in front of, almost meditating over or praying over. And the piece we're looking at is his Saint Seraphon. Now, the martyr is tied to a tree, then tortured and decapitated for preaching to the Muslims during the Third Crusade around 1196. The Order of Mercy, the patrons of the work, dedicated themselves to self-sacrifice in the name of Jesus. And that's exactly what we see here with Saint Seraphim. The bright light shining on the saint is calling attention to his tragic death and meant to increase the drama of the work, that use of tenebrism that we've gotten from Caravaggio and has traveled across Europe, that ambiguous dark background, the drama and theatrics that we've come to expect from the Baroque. The small note on the side identifies the saint because when you look at the piece, well, it's not obvious who it is. It's a man with a lump on his head. That's about all we can tell. Once again, the figure is plebeian, relatable. He could be the monk beside you. And this idea again helps the viewer relate to the work. Now, obviously, there's a lot of artistic license that's been taken with this piece. Saint Seraphim, of course, is going to be tortured and decapitated. In this case, it looks like he's simply been knocked out, maybe uh, hit with a stone or a club, and he's simply resting there, tied off to something, but probably not a tree. But what he's tied to isn't terribly important from a devotional perspective. After all, the focus is on the suffering of the saint and what he did, why he is suffering, rather than, well the illustration of exactly the tortures he would have gone through. This idea of someone almost slumbering, but yet still being some hope, he doesn't appear to be dead, after all, he has his head, that is going to be very powerful. Because the monks may see themselves that way. They may see themselves as wounded at some time in the past, maybe not physically, but spiritually when people doubted their devotion or maybe doubted their abilities as a monk. But at the same time, there's always that hope, that hope that they can turn things around or that fortune may look down upon them or that they may be meant for something greater. And that's really the power of the piece. They're being shown something greater. And the idea is that maybe through devotion, maybe through prayer and meditation to this peace, they will find a way to become something greater. Just like today, we read books about great people and aspire to be like them. Maybe we follow them on Twitter. Maybe we follow their Instagram. It's the same thing. It's just happening in a religious context. Looking at this great saint who has been willing to give the the biggest possible sacrifice, his own life, and trying to live up to that while in this monastery somewhere in Spain. <laughs> 